Welcome. So in a previous video, we talked about the relationship between linear motion and circular motion and brought some connections in here to help us understand how to get between the two. Now that we've finished up with angular momentum, we have all of our rotational concepts. Let's take a look at right translational conservative uh, conservation laws versus rotational conservation laws. So if we're talking about energy, then for translational, we have that our translational kinetic energy is one half the translational mass times the translational velocity squared. For rotational, our kinetic energy of rotational is one half times the rotational mass, also known as the moment of inertia, times the rotational velocity squared. Our connection for this is that we have that our k total is our k translational plus our k rotational. We also have a definition of moment of inertia is the sum of m sub i r sub i squared, but we usually use a table to find those. So that's our energy. We also have other connections with momentum. And momentum, right, and angular momentum. So for our translational momentum, we have that our p is equal to mv. For rotational or angular momentum, we have that l is equal to right, rotational mass times rotational angular velocity. And our connection between these two is how we find L. L is R cross P. So we've got that for momentum. If we're talking about force concepts, we have for our forces that we can relate our force to the change in momentum over time, that force is dp dt. And we have for rotational, the rotational equivalent of force torque is equal to the derivative of then angular momentum or the rotational momentum, dl dt. And our relationship between these, we've seen this before, but nice to have it again, that our torque is equal to r cross f. So once we have our forces, then if we think about second law concepts, so how to relate our forces to changes in motion, for translational motion, our Newton's second law is that our acceleration is equal to the sum of the forces over the mass. In rotational, we have that our angular acceleration, alpha, is the sum of the torques over the moment of inertia. Well, how do we relate these things? Well, one thing is that if we're in equilibrium, our object can neither move, acceleration is zero, and it can't rotate, alpha is zero, or it can't change its rotation. And so our last thing is, right, when things are conserved, or when the conservation applies. So up here we had that the force was equal to the change in momentum over time. And for a system, right, any internal forces will, will cancel. So what we can say here is that if our external forces are zero, then our momentum is conserved. If our momentum is conserved, then we can say Momentum one initial plus momentum two initial, so on and so forth is equal to momentum one final plus momentum two final, and so on and so forth. If we have it that our torques, right, because our torques are then what changes our angular momentum, so if our sum of our torque external is zero, then we can say that angular momentum, or L, is conserved. And the equations we would get from this is L1i plus L2i, so on and so forth, equals L1f plus L2f, and so on and so forth. So the connection for these is, again, right, something useful for solving. And we can have a torque external.
can be zero and force external not equal to zero. Well, when do we have a case where our torque can be zero but force is not zero? Well, if this radius is zero. So if we have any forces exerted right on the axle, then we can have the external forces not be zero, but we can have the external torques be zero. So this is a nice little table trying to just write connect all of the things that we 